Hi everybody. Today, for physics, I'm going to be talking about artillery. Continue with the operation. You may fire when ready. Fire. Fire! So for the first, I'm just going to do a little history, and then I'm going to go into the physics. So, history of modern artillery. First, the Chinese. The Chinese uh, created black powder, which is the first, um, the, the first stepping stone to artillery. It was made, the first recorded recipe was made by Wu Jing Zhong Yao. It is a mixture of saltpeter, charcoal, and sulfur. And the original purpose of black powder was uh, in fireworks. They wanted to blow these fireworks up to scare away a dragon that ate children. And eventually they decided, hey, you know, we can use this to propel things. And they created the first cannon called the Vase Cannon. And as its name suggests, it looks like a vase. It has a long neck with a larger opening and a chamber in the back that stores a lot of black powder and a projectile was loaded in and the problem with these cannons was they were horribly inaccurate, horribly short-ranged, and extremely dangerous because they lacked the proper materials to make a solid cannon so they would often explode and they would never go anywhere so the, so the only reason they were ever used was uh, the shock value and for extremely close combat even then they were unreliable um, Cannon technology didn't get to where we know it until about the 1400s, when the um, kind of mod more modern cannon was kind of cr uh, created. And then in the 1600s, you have cannons on pirate ships that everyone kind of knows about. So also in the 1600s, the mechanism for loading cannons and firing was simplified quite a bit. Before, they would just pack. Uh, like handfuls of this black powder into chambers and, and uh, whatnot, but in the 1600s they started putting them in these packages uh, and then they would just slide the package down the chamber and the ball uh, in front of the package and they could just uh, ignite a fuse that would light this, pass it, this package up and it was a lot cleaner and a lot safer for the firers of the cannon. It also could create better results because you could fit more and more consistent amounts of black powder in one shot. Uh, also during this time, they created new types of uh, ammo. So there was the classic cannonball. Then there was uh, cannonballs with chains, which were often fired at posts or masts to break them in half. There was the cannonballs that were hollow and contain shrapnel like modern day grenades, there were firebombs to ignite the wooden ships, and uh, various other types. Sometimes cannons wouldn't even be fired with balls, they'd be fired with whatever was on hand, um, more for like a shotgun effect. Also uh, forts were created with a new type of fortification called bastions, and these bastions are like V's jutting out of walls, and cannons are set up along these V's and it creates a huge line of sight for these cannons that can be fired uh, in many directions as people advance in the fort. In the 1700s, Napoleon arrived in Europe with his army, and the reason Napoleon was so effective in Europe was largely due to his strategic use of artillery and the use of rest the rest of his army. So what Napoleon would do is take his batteries of artillery and send huge volleys to strategic points that he deemed worthy of taking and he would just decimate these points with cannon fire and immediately when the volleys were through he would send cavalry and foot soldiers in to clean up any stragglers and this way he would capture very valuable points to the enemy and uh, could advance without fear of the counterattack because he would just destroy anything in his path as the history of artillery continues, we get to the second, the first and second world wars. In the first world war, artillery was fairly rudimentary. It wasn't until the second that it really 
really became deadly and dangerous. The Germans in both world wars were huge opponents of artillery and really served to advance artillery uh, as a weapon. Um, so there are three types, main types of artillery created during this time. There is the mortar, howitzer, and gun. The mortar is a usually very mobile piece of equipment that can be carried with maybe two to three soldiers. It is designed to fire above 45, but below 90 for obvious reasons. Uh, it fires over fortifications like walls, similar to a catapult or trebuchet. Um, the howitzer is designed to fire at roughly 45 degrees. It is designed for power and distance versus going over. Instead of going over, it goes through. Um, both of these were used very effectively by the Germans. The Germans often carried massive howitzers on train tracks to uh, along Germany and other nations to batter important points. And they would also sometimes uh, create these tanks that had huge mortars on them where the tanks would be armored so the soldiers inside would be protected and they had these huge mortars that could batter positions. And then the third type is guns that everyone knows. They're carried by one soldier and fired like, well, I mean, you know, you pull a trigger. Guns work very similarly to artillery, except they have a slight difference. Uh, well, modern artillery works this way as well, but instead of the the charge being loaded separately so that that package I was talking about in the 1600s that is now included with the uh, projectile in this case a bullet or a shell and a um, a hammer will strike the the end of the shell or bullet and ignite the in the powder inside and fire the bullet out of its shell so after all this why does artillery exist in the first place? Well, sometimes what you have just isn't going to cut it. Especially in castle sieges or fort sieges, the standard foot soldier armaments just won't work. So you have to get over the wall or through the wall. And the only way to do this is with high-powered artillery. In the old days, the old medieval ages, it was catapults and trebuchets that would go over the walls. Later it became cannons that could go through walls and today it is mortars and howitzers which can go over and through walls or other fortifications, it doesn't necessarily have to be walls. So that is it. That is the history of artillery. Now I'm going to talk to you about the physics side of it real briefly.